My father always said that he loved to listen to William F. Buckley Jr. as long as he didn't have to look at him. I was reminded of this this week when I came across an interview between William F. Buckley and author Mary McCarthy from the 1970s. Buckley was a rather odd character. And in the interview, it was obvious he wasn't listening to his guest as he quizzed her about free speech and access to platforms. Many of these topics are the same topics and conversations we're having today. And we can see that in the past, the conservative voice has been the mouthpiece for the establishment, much in the same way that we see the liberal voice being the mouthpiece of the establishment today. The common theme in both instances is the view that the other voice is so preposterous that it shouldn't even be allowed to be heard. It's pretty much where we are today. It's the space where the abuse of power, money, and control live and breathe. We call it systemic racism in our time, but it has nothing to do with race. It has to do with power and control. And what makes it all possible is that all these years later, we're still not listening to each other. Welcome. Welcome to Conservative Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith. This Saturday, we're talking about how America has always rather been unevenly yoked between urban and rural America. There are about five times more people living in urban areas than in rural areas. About 250 million people live in urban areas compared to about 47 million people who live in rural America. And then we wonder, why do we have minority voice? A voice that seems to be shrinking more and more. If you look back to the conservative voices in the past, we can see that at one point there was a robust conversation going on with voices like William F. Buckley Jr., John McLaughlin, and the McNeil Lair News Hour. Today, conservative voices are considered fringe, crazy, or even dangerous. I had a homeless guy come up to me on Michigan Avenue this week. He was he was trying to tell me something. As I leaned forward to hear what he was trying to say, I heard him say, I want my state back and I want my city back. He said he was praying to God for that. I told him that was a pretty good prayer to have. But later when I told a friend about this encounter, he said, well, what does this guy want to go back to? Back to the 1950s? There are a lot of inconvenient truths in the fact that we're divided because, in fact, urban areas subsidize rural areas. They subsidize their school districts and their municipalities. And wealthier states subsidize poor states. Just as I was about to swallow all that, I thought back to the homeless guy on Michigan Avenue. He had no teeth, and he had limited means, and probably a limited future, in spite of these inconvenient truths. So if the left stream is working so well, why are people homeless? And why are conditions for everyone in both urban and rural areas deteriorating? The homeless man was praying to God. That's a step in the right direction. We might not be listening to God, but God is listening to us. It's a one-sided conversation, but that's okay, because at least somebody is listening. If you would like to join us at Conservative Coffee Hour, Conservative Coffee Hour is every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time on Zoom. I will include my email in the description of this video. I'll be happy to send you an invitation, and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.